2024 now, right? You're starting to see the tides turn, mm. right? Where people are just finally like, all right, like, yeah, this is kind of dumb. Yeah. So where do you see it going? Yeah, great point. I think we passed peak woke around 2020, 2021. Uh-huh. Maybe BLM summer was the po- was the was the peak. Um, what I see happening now is the pendulum genuinely starting to come back towards the center. Mm. I think we're seeing culturally and socially in the consciousness a rightward shift. When I say a rightward shift, I don't even mean moving right from the center, but I mean moving more towards the center. Yeah, because like if I would if I were to think like left. okay, American was or America was conservative in the fifties, right? Yes wholesome Christian values. Mm -hmm. So let's just say everybody is conservative. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it starts shifting left, like you said, and you get the eighties and the nineties and you know, when it peaked, like when, when humanity peaked. Yeah. Cause you had the balance. Yeah. So there's a balance, right. And then all of a sudden you shift all the way left. (laughs) And then, so you're just saying, we're going to shift back. Yeah. I think it's, I think we're at the early stages of, of that shift back. I'm seeing many, many signs of that. Even just people's willingness to talk about it. Yeah. Because sane liberals are tired of it. Sane Mm -hmm. conservatives are tired of it. Sane centrists are tired of it. Sane apolitical people are... It's exhausting. It's exhausting. It is tiring when people are just being beaten over the head nonstop with this ideology and this claptrap and, oh, you're white, so you're evil. Oh, you're a man. You're a terrible person. You're, well, let's put rainbow flags freaking everywhere. Let's trans your kids. Let's... uh, People are like, wait, 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 wait. Stop. And then the like, rise well, of guys like Andrew Tate and stuff happen. Yes. So you get the obvious reactionary movement against it. Um, but you also just have more normal people who just day to day, they're like, oh, okay, this thing is real. Because there was a lot of denial at first. Mm-hmm. If I were to go to you in, in 2014 and be like, oh, yeah, Ryan, um, you know that like in a couple of years, like, you know, men are just going to say that they're women and start competing in female sports and start breaking <laughs> you would have been like come on man like shut up yeah. like yeah. that's not gonna happen like, you'd be yeah. like i feel like man you'd be surprised and you know what you know they're gonna start like trying to trans their kids and put them on hormones and yeah. stop them going you'd be like no come on like no one's that crazy like they're not gonna push for that and then they do it and they've been doing it and people are like oh wait you're teaching my kid what right? yeah. why are so many why has there been this spike in homeschooling yeah. why are people pulling their kids out We're of schools left right yeah. yeah exactly why it's happening. I don't even know what the statistics are, but it's gone up. I think I want to say more than a hundred percent easily over the past few years. And there's a reason for that because people are seeing it and they're like, Oh, this is real. This is something that is comes back to what we were saying earlier. This is something that's detrimental to society. I this think, is, co- I think COVID made that happen to be honest. Cause it like, accelerated it. Yeah. Like people, you know, willingly trusted the governments mm-hmm. and you know, just stop doing everything. They lost their businesses. They lost their jobs. They realized it wasn't as bad as people thought. Mm -hmm. And like, they got duped. They're like, dude, who won in all of this? Mm. The government, the pharmaceutical company, like, you know, not many people won other than those people. And it's like, yeah. And then people were saying that, yeah, this is a conspiracy theory. It's like, Mm. well, a lot of these things actually were true. Like, huh? Yeah. And, and what's happening as well is the democratization of information, right? It's no longer the case that it's just the legacy traditional mainstream media that has an entire monopoly on the flow of information. You've got all of these podcasters out there and YouTubers and people posting on Twitter, and you've got doctors who are not aligned with the government, not aligned with um, all of these things who are putting out their own ideas and they're sharing it on Instagram. And, yeah. on, and then you get Elon coming in, buying X and suddenly, oh, people can really speak more freely now and mm-hmm. people can see different ideas and discuss and debate. And it helps to, it helps to moderate everything. People, people freak out about it because number one, there are certain people who don't want to lose that power and control. Um, and there are people who don't want to have their ideas challenged. And there are also people who, understandably think, oh, you know, we don't want it to swing too far in the other direction. Right. But I think that when you, this is the the joy of freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is a, is a very imperfect thing, but it's better than the alternatives. Yeah. It's better than censorship. It's better than censorship and control and a government and entity just saying you cannot 
you cannot talk about this. You're banned from this. You're censored. You're blocked. Whatever it is, um, it's messy because people have all sorts of <laughs> you, you let a lot of dumb people <laughs> yeah, yeah, say whatever they want. Like yeah. people have all sorts of ideas. It's it's a bit well, most people chaotic. are very smart. So yeah, that, it's it's chaotic. But if you allow the battle of ideas to take place, yeah, this is why from this is why things like wokeism rely on censorship because the ideas are absurd. <laughs> If you allow free speech to take place and someone is pushing, hey, hey, men, men can have vaginas and get pregnant. <laughs> and for, for that, for that notion to take priority in the mainstream and to chill other people, you need to threaten, cancel, deplatform, shame anyone who wants to counter it. Yeah. It was like with COVID. You, you, you delete the other half of the conversation, the argument, right. right? You delete the other half. Oh, that doctor disagrees. <laughs> Get rid of him. Oh, he's uh, look. All the all the doctors agree. Oh, that, no, he do, he doesn't. Boom. <laughs> okay, they all agree again now, right? And they yeah. kept doing this, and now it's like you you open it up, and when those conversations can take place, the truth wins out. Because if an idea is so absurd and someone is voicing it, it's like, well, no, no. okay, no, let's hear the yeah. counter position to this, and it's like, all right, well, this guy's making sense. This guy is not. So this one wins out. So the ability for them to do that and control all the information has has massively changed i think that we've we've hit a real interesting shift every year the amount of people who are tuning into and trusting all the mainstream media channels like it's it's all declining yeah it's all declining well, and now you just have, they have this choice, new you people know have, yeah people have choice and with that it it can also get messy because even independent people can get audience captured and they can lie and they can have perverse incentives and so on but again you allow the different voices out there to talk, the ideas to compete against each other, mm -hmm. be tested. If I say something that is totally ridiculous and makes no sense and someone or millions of people can be like, hey, <laughs> like what you just said right there is factually incorrect and here's what that statistic is or here's a better argument or whatever. It's like, okay, I'm. Yeah. It's, it's a naturally corrective mechanism and it helps to keep more people honest. Yeah. 